Hello and welcome back again. So in the first two lectures of microwave mixers, we discuss about the fundamentals of mixers, how mixer works as a circuit element, how the frequency translation happens. In the second lecture of mixers, we studied how devices like diodes and transistors basically perform as mixers or how fundamentally the mixing action happens using various small signal and large signal models of the diode and the transistor. Now after that uh, we discussed various mixer circuits which are commonly used to implement mixers. We discussed about simplest single diode mixer or single transistor mixer. After that we discussed the balanced circuits which are single balance circuits and double balance circuits. After that we discussed about sub harmonically pumped mixers which are used for very high frequency mixing applications and lastly we studied about image reject mixers which are used to have image enhancement or very good performance for the image rejection. So in this lecture we are going to focus on the design aspects that have to be considered while designing a mixer circuit. So basically there are two approaches of mixer design. One is component or circuit based design in which you design everything from scratch. You select the mixing device, you select the type of the configuration or type of the circuit that you are going to use and then you design the individual components in the circuit to achieve the desired performance. The second approach is IC based design in which you use a commercially available mixer IC from one of the manufacturers and then you build a circuit around that IC to get the desired mixing performance. So we'll study these two approaches one by one in this lecture and before going to that it's very important that we analyze and compare various circuits that we have studied so far. Let's begin. So what we have here is a comparison chart between various mixer circuits. So we have mixer types single diode, single balanced using 180 and 90 degree couplers, double balanced mixer, subharmonic and image reject. We are going to compare all these mixer circuit types based on following criteria which is VSWR, port to port isolation which we saw is very very important, LO power required which is used to drive the mixing devices and IIP3 which indicates the linearity of the mixer. Now VSWR represents the reflections that we see at the three ports of the mixer, the RF port, the LO port and the IF port. VSWR basically depends on the impedance matching networks that we use in various different kinds of mixer circuits that we have studied and for some of the mixer configurations or mixer circuits we have used couplers as the input device for RF and LO. So the VSWR in general depends on either the coupling structure or the impedance matching network that we have used for all the three ports. So in case of single diode mixers, uh, there are no coupling structures used. So all the three port VSWR actually depend on the impedance matching network. If you observe here for single balance mixers, we get a good VSWR for RF and LO ports as compared to single balance mixers using 180 degree hybrid which is the inherent property of a 90 degree hybrid coupler. For double balance mixers again we use couplers so we have a good VSWR. Subharmonic mixers we don't use any coupling structures so it depends on the impedance matching networks. Image reject mixer also if you recall we use coupling structures so we have a good uh, VSWR at all the three ports. Second is the port to port isolation again it depends on the type of structures that we are using to separate the LO, RF and IF ports. So at the input if you remember for RF and LO we mostly use a coupling structure in case of balanced circuits and we typically use uh, an IF filter in most of the circuits like single diode and subharmonically pumped. Image reject we use coupling structures at both input and output which are the RF and LO and the IF ports. So if you see for image reject mixes because we use the coupling structures we get a very good performance on the port to port isolation whereas wherever we don't use the coupling structures the isolation depends on the filters that we use to reject the undesired frequencies. Then we have the LO power, LO power is required to drive the mixing devices that have been used in the circuits and you see that 
लो एलो पावर्स और मॉडरेट एलो पावर्स आर रिक्वायर्ड फॉर सिंगल डायोड सब हार्मोनिकली पंप मिक्सर्स एंड सिंगल बैलेंस मिक्सर्स बिकॉज द एलो पावर डिपेंड्स ऑन द नंबर ऑफ मिक्सिंग डिवाइसेज दैट आर बींग यूज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन केस ऑफ डायोड मिक्सर्स सिंगल डायोड इज ओनली वन डायोड सो यू रिक्वायर अ लो पावर इन केस ऑफ इमेज रिजेक्ट मिक्सर और डबल बैलेंस मिक्सर यू हैव अ वेरी high elo power requirement because double balance mixer contains four diodes image reject mixer contains two doubly balanced mixers hence the elo power is very high ip3 uh, we know that the balanced structures have a good spurious response and hence for balanced mixers we get a good linearity so the ip3 point is very high so the mixer is more linear similarly for the image reject mixers however for sub harmonic mixers or single diode mixers if you observe the ip3 is very low because there is no balancing action done for single balance mix since it's only biased in one for one of the signals we get a moderate ip3 hence we get a moderate linearity so on this various factors we have the performance of all the mixer types and based on our application what we require in the mixer design we can select a particular configuration or particular circuit of a mixer which caters the demands of our application so this is a very important comparative study that has to be kept in mind before we start designing any mixer so let's start with the mixer design process now so first thing what do we need before we start the design we need some data to start with and the specification should be given or known to us before we actually start designing a mixer the specifications are nothing but the mixer performance matrix that we studied in the first lecture on microwave mixers so we have or we must know rf lo and i frequency we must know the bandwidth requirements at these frequencies we should know the minimum conversion gain or maximum loss that is tolerable by the mixer the lo power requirement port vswrs the isolations noise figure and again ip3 or the linearity numbers and all these things actually depend on the mixer is going to be used in what kind of application let's move further so there are certain design steps in general that has to be followed while designing a mixer first one is you should choose the device which kind of device you are going to use we have broadly two choices one is diode another one is a transistor or a fed if the mixer requires a gain specification then we'll definitely go for fed mixers if the mixer doesn't have any specification on the gain part we can use diodes in that case we'll have conversion loss choice of circuit is the second step so once you decide the mixing device then you have to choose Uh, the type of circuit that you are going to use based on what performance you want for example if i if i require a very high input vswr for the rf and lo ports is my critical concern then if we go back you see that a single balance mixer implemented using 90 degree coupler gives us a very good input vswrs so this comparative chart comes to rescue when we decide the type of circuit that we are going to use the third is you actually build the circuit you design the circuit you design various coupling structures you design the biasing of the device and whole lot of other things that goes around the mixing device fourth one is simulation you simulate the structure for various performance parameters such as conversion gain noise figure then you have port to port isolation and the input vswrs for all the three ports and the fifth one is if you don't meet those specifications after simulation results <coughs> are out then you have to optimize the circuit you have to tune the impedance matching networks or the coupling structures the lo signal level or the dc biasing to get the desired output moving ahead so there is a general design rational which we follow while designing any mixer and that rational is as follows so we have a typical circuit once you choose the mixing device all you have to do is you have to take care of the isolation part you have to take care of the matching part and you have to take care of the filtering part these are the three main aspects you have to focus on uh, let's say first you design a coupling structure or a diplexer to separate out the rf and lo signals so that design is one part this design will depend on the frequency of operation what are the desired frequencies of rf and lo you require the second and the very important or the critical one is the rf and if impedance matching network design which 
should match the RF source and load impedances to the junction input and output impedances of the mixing device. But the question is who is going to provide the junction input and output impedances. We know that when a diode is pumped with an LO signal, the diode current is modulated, it changes right from 0 to its maximum value and hence the diode's input impedance actually varies from a very low value to very high value. And it's not a straightforward impedance matching network design problem where we have two fixed impedances. In this case, we have one impedance which is fixed, for example, 50 ohm, which is normally the case, while the junction impedance, which is the input impedance in case of RF impedance matching uh, network design and output impedance in case of IF matching network design, both these impedances vary with the LO signal level and with time. So it's very important or critical to choose what impedance you will use to start the design process. So that's why the device junction parameters actually decide this junction input and output impedances and this device junction parameters depend on the LO signal and the DC bias applied. So this is what we do. We estimate the junction impedances, we vary the LO level and DC bias to optimize the input and output match so that we get a desired matching performance. So you have to start with some impedance level, you see the performance, then you vary the LO level and DC bias so that you get the desired performance in the matching network design. Okay, so this was the basic rationale behind uh, mixer design using either diode or transistor. The design process for diodes is mainly focused in this lecture. It slightly deviates when you go for transistor based design. We'll focus on the diode circuits in this lecture. Moving forward with the help of an example, let's design a single diode mixer for an input RF frequency of 4.25 gigahertz. The IF is fixed at 500 megahertz. And the LO requirement from these two things will be 3.75 gigahertz. In this case, we have chosen LO which is below the RF frequency, which might be specific to an application. And the circuit that we are going to build is of this type. So in this example, for the illustration purpose and not to make it more complicated, we are going to skip the RF and LO isolation part, but will focus more on the RF matching and IF filtering part. So in this case, we are going to use a BAT1503W chip diode, which is a short key diode from Infineon Technologies. Here is a snapshot of the diode data sheet. If you can read, the diode can be used up to 12 gigahertz, which fits our requirement. And this is the footprint of the diode. It's a chip diode, so it can be soldered using standard SMT technique. And hence, it is very useful for microstrip design which we are going to cover next. So we are going to use a simulation software named Microwave Office by National Instruments also called as AWR. Uh, let's start the design. The first part that we are going to focus is the SPICE model of the diode because the diode simulation is very critical. Uh, if you can see this is the actual SPICE model of the diode. And the SPICE model actually lets you enter all the different diode parameters related to the junction. For example, you have a saturation current specification, you have uh, the junction capacitance for zero bias, you have the maximum junction voltage, then you have a reverse breakdown voltage, the energy band gap and so on. The, all these specifications you can get from the SPICE model which is available on the internet mostly by the manufacturer. Once you get that SPICE model file, you can take that model or import that model into the software, you can put in all the parameters and then this particular diode will be simulated using this configuration. Now around this diode what you see are the components which account for the package parasitic. So we have also included those into the diode model. Now once the diode model is done, the next step is to bias the diode. So here is the biasing circuit. We have our diode here. Uh, we have a DC voltage source of 5 volt. I have a resistor to control the current, inductor to avoid high frequency signals to enter this path. And then we have this DC block capacitors 
Now, this biasing is done for the diode current of approximately 1 milliampere or little less than 1 milliampere and we see that we have applied a port here and a port here to see the operation of diode with this particular biasing. Now, this biasing helps us to estimate the first value of the RF input impedance that the RF signal is going to see at the diode junction. So, if we simulate this particular structure and we observe the S11 at the desired RF frequency which is 4.25 gigahertz, we see that the normalized R and X are this. So, R is around 0.67 and X is our minus 0.22 in normalized case. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take this impedance as the first estimate of our RF input impedance for the diode and we are going to build a matching circuit using this impedance. Let us do that. So, we have studied the impedance matching network design using single stubs or shunt stubs. We are going to follow that and let us see what we have here. So, the impedance that we see which is R is equal to 0.67 and X is equal to 0.22 is at this point. Now, using standard single stub matching technique, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to draw a constant VSWR circle from this point. Then we are going to take the diagonally opposite point for this particular load which is this point which corresponds. So, if, if this is my Z in for the RF signal then this will be Y in for the RF signal. Okay? Now, we are going to match this particular point to the center which is 50 ohm. We will follow the standard procedure. So, from this point I will move towards the generator. And I will stop at a point where I cut the G equal to 1 circle. So, this is my point at which I will stop. From this point, I will go in this way to the 50 ohm point. So, now this value of susceptance, which is approximately here, has to be cancelled out by the stub. Hence, we choose the corresponding point on the positive side which will be right here right? and we see the marking on the wavelength scale and we see that from this point, if we see the length, we get L stub equal to 0.067 lambda. So, this is our stub length and for the line which is in series with the load or Y in RF, we have to go for these lines. We see this, we measure this on the wavelength scale and we see that L1 is nothing but 0.168 lambda. So, our final design will be like this. So, at this point I have some Z in RF which we have seen from the S11 simulated chart and then I will have a series line with length L1 equal to 0.168 lambda. And then I will have an open circuited stub because I started from this point and this length L stub will be equal to 0 0.067 lambda. And then I will have my 50 ohm looking into this port. Now, the characteristic impedances of both these lines is 50 ohms. This is our matching network design for the RF frequency for a given impedance value. So, moving ahead, this is the circuit that we have built using the impedance matching network and the device. So, this is our mixing device, a BAT15 diode. This is the biasing circuit. 
these are the DC block capacitors and we have a series line and the open circuited stub which represents impedance matching network for the RF frequency. We have the connectors here, again a connector here, again a connector here and the RF input is from this end, the LO input is from this end and right now we are interested in observing what happens directly at the mixer output which is the IF port. We are not processing the mixer output, we want to observe the bare mixer output without any processing. For this particular design the substrate that we have used is epsilon r equal to 2.2. Uh, the height of the substrate is 0.8 mm, copper thickness is 35 micron and we have tan delta for this particular substrate is 0.0007. Now let us see the results uh, at the output of the mixer you get this. So if you can observe you have a signal at 0.5 gigahertz which is 500 megahertz which is nothing but our desired IF frequency and you get all other frequency components which are undesired. So you can observe that you have a LO signal leaking into the IF output, you have an input RF signal leaking into the IF output along with that you have all the spurious signals which are present in the IF output. So we basically need a filter to filter out all these things and the filter will also help in the isolation because we see here the isolation levels LO to RF, LO to IF, RF to IF are well below 10 dB which is not a good number. So now we are going to see that how a simple filter addition in the IF output port can dramatically improve the results. So here is what we do at the output of the mixer which was this point which we earlier observed. Now uh, we have designed a bandpass filter centered at 500 megahertz with a bandwidth of 100 megahertz and you have a simple LC structure and rest of the circuit remains the same. Now if you see the IF output at this point you observe the following. Can you see the difference? all the rest of the spurious components have been dramatically reduced. You get an IF which is the highest amplitude signal over here and you also see that the LO power and the RF power that is available at the IF port is very very low. Along with you have some spurious signals but all, all these signals are well below 80 dB. So with a good filter design you can achieve a very good performance and if you see on the isolation front the isolation between LO and IF and RF and IF which is this graph is, is very very high. So it is around 100 dB. Now this number is practically not possible but because the filter is ideal in this case you get this number but if you do a good filter design see the amount of isolation you can achieve between LO IF and RF IF. Now the isolation between LO and RF is still poor because right now we haven't done anything to isolate the RF and LO ports. Let us see the conversion loss and noise figure. We get a conversion loss of around 16 dB for LO powers of 6 dBm, 9 dBm till 12 dBm. After that you get a decrease or increase in the conversion loss which is certainly not desired. So this graph represents the effect of LO power on the mixer conversion loss performance. The noise figure that we get from the circuit that we built is around 7 dB and you see that as you increase the LO power after 12 dBm the noise figure also increases which is undesired. So again the LO power is a critical component it affects your conversion loss as well as noise figure performance. Now we will see the second approach of mixer design which is an IC based design. Uh, there are lot of commercially available mixer ICs which can be used to design a mixer circuit. All you need to do is chalk out your desired specifications and you have to find an IC that meets those design specifications. So let us take a case you have an IC from Maxim Semiconductor uh, which is Max 2680. The specifications are it requires a supply voltage of 2.7 to 5.5 volts. The RF input and LO input are or can be in the range of 400 megahertz to 2.5 gigahertz which is quite broadband. IF output is from 10 to 500 megahertz. Noise figure is 8.3 dB at 1.95 gigahertz. 
uh, IP3 is not that uh, good but it's still 8.2 dBm at 1.95 gigahertz gain is around 7.6 dB so this indicates that all these ICs that are available if they are providing gain you must guess that these are of course built using transistors the maximum LO and RF power can be plus 10 dBm at the isolation you have 22 dB and 26 dB for LOIF and LORF respectively. So this is a typical application circuit. This is the IC. You have an LO input through a coupling capacitor. You have an RF input through a matching circuit. So remember matching circuit for RF is very very important. So we have an RF input. We have IF output which is taken over here and these are the biasing components. So let's see the performance. So uh, we have fabricated a PCB using this IC. So you can see the PCB snapshot. Here is the IC. Uh, then you have the power circuitry over here. You have RF input. Uh, this is the matching network that we just uh, studied. And you have the LO signal which is coupled using a coupling capacitor. And the IF output is taken over here. So this is a photograph. You have IF output, RF input and LO input and this is the power supply input. The performance is like this. Here's a sn snapshot for a particular level and frequency of the signals. So you have an input signal LO at 1708 megahertz. You have an RF at 900.9 megahertz and you get an IF output at 808.7 megahertz which is the difference between these two signals. Now if you see the level of IF is very close to that of RF and the frequencies are also very close to each other. This is a very good example how critical IF filtering is. So if you don't have a good IF filter, if you don't have a sharp roll off, the RF signal might leak into the IF port and you will have inadequate RF to IF isolation. So along with IF, you see some spurious signals. You also see an LO signal in the IF output and all these things have to be eliminated by using a proper IF filter design. So these are the various aspects of mixer design that we studied so far. Just to recall, uh, there are two design approaches. One is uh, by using component or circuit based design where we do everything from scratch. We select the device, we select the type of the circuit and then we design the individual circuit components to achieve the desired performance. In the second design approach, we choose a commercially available mixer IC which can fit our uh, desired requirements or specifications and we build a circuit or PCB around that IC and we test it to get the required performance. So these are the two design approaches that are available for mixer design and it's very very important to choose right devices or right ICs before we start the mixer design. With this uh, I'll stop here. So this concludes our discussion on microwave mixers. So just to recap all the three lectures, in the first lecture we discussed the mixer fundamentals. In the second lecture we discussed devices and various circuits that are used for mixer design or mixer implementation. And in this lecture which is the third lecture we discussed the performance comparison of various types of mixers, various design methodologies that can be followed to de design mixers and we also looked at these things using uh, simulation examples using simulation examples. With this I conclude, thank you so much.